Besides those temperatures, by the way, if I could have one thing for Christmas, it would be that. Just let me keep this weather forever. Loving it. Um, let's talk about, though, a little bit of rain out there. Um, you know, with time of year, it's December. We could be talking freezing rain or sleet or snow, but we're actually going to be talking plain old rain. Here we go. You can see the system kind of overspreading right here, moving in across the northern plains and upper Midwest. It's a, it's a quick mover, kind of like a clipper, like you might see this time of year, but there's no cold air with it. It has limited moisture, though, so we won't see a ton of really anything. Right now, it's green out there in South Dakota on the radar, showing where we have some rain, a few pockets of some yellow. Maybe there's a couple of spots getting some a brief freezing rain or brief sleep, but it's not a big deal. It's not going to be uh, long-lasting. Temperatures warm enough and mild enough that we will be looking at just plain old rain and everything actually really light. The only way you can really keep track of this thing is if you watch the clouds and watch the spin to the clouds. Des Moines, Minneapolis, by later today, you're going to have more clouds than anything else. You might get a brief shower. Don't be surprised with it. I'm not sure I'd bother carrying the umbrella around all day. Just wear a coat that has a hood today. Um, we're going to see those showers move on up into the UP of Michigan by tomorrow morning. Chicago, again, more clouds than anything else, but can't rule out a shower. And the whole thing pushes east Buffalo and Pittsburgh by Wednesday night. A couple of showers heading your way. So today in Pierre, South Dakota, we're starting off with clouds right now. Could be a couple of showers out there this morning, and then we're just mainly cloudy through the day. Look at our temperatures, mid 40s. So above average temperatures continue. Things do change by the weekend. We'll have more on that and we'll go coast to coast right now with Anna Ritis. Good morning, Jen, and good morning to you at home. We've been showing you the impacts of the heavy rain, the recent rain in Florida, but now it could hit you in the wallet soon. Because isn't that the one of the record? I think that, that was the world record yeah, the and world, it was set world like in 2000. So there's your goal for this snow winter. Morning. If you can get some snow, then you need to make something taller than that to set the world record. All right, um, not a big chance of that unless you go to the mountains in the west for now. We've got our western system that we're tracking, and Cantori talked about how snow levels will finally be dropping a little bit. Good news, actually. We need the snowpack, and we also could uh, not use so much rainfall in the mountains there. So that'll be an improving situation overall uh, when you think about that in the west. So that system moves in through Friday, building in through the southwest. We're going to see a big trough digging in through the west. That's going to translate into a southern plain storm, much like you might get in the springtime. And we could be talking severe weather on Saturday. We'll keep an eye on rain and possible storms. Rain all the way up to Chicago. Chicago by Sunday. Stuff. Just about 20 minutes past the hour on this Tuesday. Good morning to you. You're watching AMHQ. It's that time of the morning where we tell you what the driving conditions are wherever you are living. So before you grab the keys in Cleveland, know that it is very foggy out there this morning. You've got a dense fog advisory. Here's a live look. You can kind of notice the fog even though the sun's not up yet. Yeah, you know, it's been hit or miss in terms of visibility. It's been coming in and out and we're running about three miles right now at the airport. Mm -hmm. That's not enough to cause any delays, no. but, um, you know, could be a little thicker in some neighborhoods. Yeah, and you can you can find the patchy spots in some spots and especially if you're waking up maybe with the below freezing temperatures it could be freezing fog so let's say you're going from Cleveland to Toledo you're taking 80 or maybe a 75 notice the dense fog advisories are there. Yeah, we've got um, a lot of issues out there with fog. Detroit's another spot we're watching the airports. The issue today with travel, I think in the Northeast, you know, our little system scooting off, but a little windy, so yeah. breezy. And you know how it is at the Northeast hubs, especially Newark. If anyone sneezes, you get delays. So we'll, <laughs> we'll watch for that today. Otherwise, the fog and real morning issue for drivers especially. So, uh, Steph, we've got five uh, counties in eastern and north uh, central North Carolina mm -hmm. with two-hour delays because about 40 minutes past the hour, you've got 20 until the top before you grab the keys. Let us tell you what the driving conditions are. We've got dense fog covering uh, several big cities in the Midwest and the South. No airport delays to speak of yet. We did see some yesterday, but we say good morning to you in Louisville, Kentucky. Almost the entire state of Kentucky stuck in fog. From this vantage point, you really can't tell. I mean, you can notice kind of, you know. Yeah, it looks like some lowering of the clouds yeah. up there. Um, so low cloud deck, but not down to the surface right now in this spot. This thing about fog, it's, yeah. not, it's never everywhere. It's not it's widespread. patchy in mm -hmm. spots. Um, um, so we're going to watch out for that. Also, watching temperatures, too. There's a few spots near the freezing mark. Look at Louisville, 33. Yeah. So, so if, if you're could be an issue. traveling anywhere, let's say 64, 65, 75 to Bowling Green, mm -hmm. as far east as Jackson, we've got uh, a lot of fog yeah, A there. lot of low visibility this morning, so that's going to be a driving thing. When it comes to air travel, though, the spots to watch are northwest and mm -hmm. maybe south Florida. Again, Miami, got to keep an eye on things for you. Fort Lauderdale, West Palm. Otherwise, the wind in the northeast, Anaritas, I think could cause some delays. It's not a huge deal, but 
enough mm -hmm. for them, you know, in their airspace. Yep. Thanks, Jen. Steph? Well, okay. Literally yeah. slides. I mean, you see entire chunks of land sliding. And as Dave sort of alluded to, these mudslides, uh, debris flows, and landslides get their origin years sort of before they actually happen. Let's talk about that. You know, when we have a fire, a wildfire, uh, the burning plants release gases that permeate into the soil, weaken the roots of any trees or shrubs that are there. And those gases sort of interact. Um, and what happens is you get a coating, a wax-like layer coating on top of the soil that becomes impermeable to water. So what happens is when you end up getting rain at some point, the rain comes down and large chunks of topsoil or debris or rocks start moving along along the face of the slope and remove that top layer of soil. But then you're left with this other layer of soil that is hydrophobic, as we're calling it, which is impermeable to water. It's like a wax-like layer, and so everything just slides right on top of it. That's when you get the landslide. And this layer, this hydrophobic layer, can actually actually persist for years, depending on the intensity of the fire in the first place and, of course, what happens when the weather results after that. So this is certainly going to be a concern this year in the El Nino year, especially in California when we get the uh, projected rainfall.